Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here. This video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video, and this time it is going to be using the Great Fortress Zelos Legacy support for the BES Boss Rush deck yet again. But this time, as you can see, it's very different from the last build that I played. This is BES Zodiacs. This is Gradius Zodiacs. Um, and as you can probably hear, my voice is absolutely shot because I've had a very deep sinus and throat infection for the last four days. So it's been very, very stressful and strenuous on my voice. Uh, for the uh, for the little bit of time that it's been and I've been uh, hacking up nonsense and it's overall I feel like I'm gargling razor blades right now and this is uh this is very painful but gotta make videos gotta keep this going but this is a deck I really have really enjoyed playing uh, just because of the fact that you have so many cards that can bypass your normal summon in the form of Zodiac Triangle as well as Terra Top so it doesn't really conflict too heavily with your establishment of boss rush now there are some other cards you can add to this deck like Planet Pathfinder and stuff like that but mainly the uh, the essential goal that you have of this deck is that you use the Zodiacs as a very aggressive engine that also generates defenses in the form of Drancia, as well as Emerald resetting your resources and getting you a draw, allowing you to essentially start playing with a lot of cards. Because this deck uses a lot of cards to start you know its engine moving in the form of the field spell with Boss Rush, plus your BES monster, it's definitely something that you want to uh, to include is uh, is having ways to access extra cards and the Terra Top into Zodiac stuff or the Zodiac Triangle um, assisting you there is just a huge amount of uh, assets that you have access to off of uh, doing these things and like I said you're able to summon Emerald turn one which means you're able to infinitely recycle your BES monsters if that becomes the case um, and you don't really overlay with anything anyway so like all those rank sixes and stuff from the previous build that just came up like one out of every hundred games or so are replaced by the only cards that actually do come up which is Cyber Dragon Nova and Cyber Dragon Infinity um, because those cards, you can summon them off Panzer Dragon with Instant Fusion and combine it with Crystal Core, you know, things like that. But overall, this is a, a really interesting little deck list and I've really been enjoying playing it because, like I said, it combines what I used in the previous build, which was a big defensive line to support your BES monsters, but instead, it does so in a very aggressive way. You're able to just keep comboing off without using your normal summon multiple turns with the Zodiac cards. And that's something that is a very big asset for the deck. But anyway, let's not waste too much time uh, talking about this because I don't know how much longer my voice is going to keep up. So let's just not waste any more time and let's just jump straight into the first game against some randoms, shall we? And let's see that hopefully we get some good games out of it. Hopefully. Potentially. Maybe. Who knows? Voice is dying, so let's just jump straight in. Let's see how this goes. <clears throat> awesome. I get to go first. Now, like I said previously, my voice is absolutely shot um, due to the fact that I have absolutely, like, apparently no will to live because my body is just trying to off itself by giving me every single sort of sickness that probably exists in mankind. Now, why is, uh, why is this, uh, not responding? Is it just trying to link up the, uh, the internet here? Or what's going on? I don't understand. Has he left? Let's find out. Let's see if I can up my, uh, up my, uh, thing. Up oh, there it goes. Amazing. Uh, but yes, we're going to use this now, like I said in the uh, deck portion of this video, this is Zodiac Metal Foes because using these Zodiac cards to generate defensive lines as well as bypass your normal summon through the cards like Terra Top and uh, Zodiac Triangle are very, very good for you. Now I'm actually, I have to do this every single time. You'd think that I would, uh, you'd think that I would learn how to do this before I started recording. Set priority to high. Yes, change priority. Alright, so now this should at least render faster on my screen. Now, if it's just a problem of bad internet between me and my opponent, then there's nothing that can be done about that on my end, unfortunately. But from here, what I'm going to be able to do is I'm going to be able to do my Zodiac play with uh, Molmarats off of Invoker, draw a card off of Emerald, search Viper, have Drancia plus Strike and Max C, and then, um, like, based off whether or not I draw the field spell off of, off of the uh, Emerald that I'm going to be uh, using is going to be the deciding factor on whether or not I'm going to be able to summon this Tetran from hand and then set up Boss Rush. But this deck has a little bit better of a time of uh, just establishing itself um, like earlier and uh, more like coherently throughout the game because of the fact that if you're not doing your BES plays, you do still have a rather sizable part of your deck doing Zodiac stuff. So, that's something, uh, something to consider. But I'm going to be playing around DD Crow here, even though it's not uh, necessarily a thing that needs to happen, but you don't even really need to use Tigris' effect to uh, to re-equip Momorap, because you could just overlay twice without using Wildbow's effect, and you can summon uh, the two Momorats from deck without ever putting one in Graveyard, 
and thus you uh, play around DD Crow all the way up until the point where you uh, where you have the uh, emerald. That's going to be the part where the DD Crow, if there's a DD Crow involved, is going to hurt you. But otherwise, uh, you get to the special Momorats, and uh, you get to keep going. You get to get your Bullhorn Sorch and um, your Momorat uh, at the same time, and so that's what uh, that's what makes this work. Now it's uh, something that. Your opponent can force you into a DD Crow situation if they use like ghost uh, ghost cherries or winter blossom cherries, whatever it is, uh, because of the fact that you'll be able to uh, they'll be able to like remove your Drancias, meaning that you can't overlay four times, thus forcing Tigris to be used to make Molmorat plays happen. But uh, it's not that big of an issue, not nearly as big an issue as my voice is. Oh my god, oh this hurts. This hurts like a bitch, but I need content. I need to make content. My goal for 2017 is to literally miss only 10 days of content for the entirety of 2017. That is my goal. Uh, now we will see how well that works, but that's my goal. <laughs> my goal is to not miss nearly as many days of content as I have in 2016, because I've missed like a good 50 something days where I just like literally spent half months of just not doing anything. And uh, that's not something I want to do. But putting back Tigris into Molmorat is the most important thing here, because you can put Tigris on top of Drancia if it survives, um, and also the Molmorats can be summoned out of deck off Invoker. So you can uh, definitely do stuff there. That's another Tetra. That's that's not what we were looking for. But since I can't make any plays with the BES port of the portion of the engine, the uh, Zodiac stuff is just going to basically carry me. Now I'm not going to set the boss rush because that just makes Twin Twister more valuable for my opponent. Uh, there's no point to set it for a bluff if my opponent has something like Twin Twister then I'm just going to have them use it on the one strike. But this is still a very strong position, even though I didn't do anything uh, resorting what my uh, what my deck needs to be. So he got rid of my Drancia, but he gave me a Kaiju. Uh, so what I'll probably do next turn is actually I had Normal Summoner set that turn. I could have Normal Summoned my Tetran, um, but there was nothing I wanted to tribute over. So it's it's not really a big deal, but I could have normal summoned Tetra and got counters on it, and then played Boss Rush next turn potentially. But it's fine. I'm still gonna be able to use Emerald and Invoker. Like you, you outing the Drancia did literally nothing. Um, Jizakiru, uh, do I? I'm okay, okay. So you're playing you're playing Cyber Dragons. Uh, this is a very very obvious thing. Um, I kind of want to strike this, but I also just don't, but I think I should, just so that I protect the Invoker. Um, and then, once the strike resolves, I'm going to go ahead and drop Max C, uh, just so that if he does have something like Cyber Dragon, I'm going to be able to just get free cards for it. So I'm already so far ahead of him in terms of cards anyway, because of the fact that I've got Emerald and Invoker, if both of those resolve. Oh, he's playing Eidolons, too. Okay. So there's that. Uh, but because of the fact that I'm playing a deck like this, right? Where, uh, where if he's smart, he probably is going to banish my Drancia from Grave. Um, well, not even really Drancia, but just one of the Zodiac monsters. Probably Bullhorn or Drancia. Uh, if he goes to summon the big Earth one, that would probably be the keyest thing here to do. But uh, Or he could just go for the white one using stuff in his graveyard. I mean, that card's inherently strong, too. Um... But yeah, like I said, there's uh, there's plenty of things for me to do, especially since I can normal summon next turn because I'm not locked under boss rush. Yeah, he's doing the light one. Uh, so him doing this, I got an instant fusion, which is actually very good because that means that if he negates this with the light um, Eidolon Beast, then I'm going to be able to just normal summon Viper and go into my uh, Tigris place. Because, uh, or he just just negate either of these. Um, like, he's probably going to attack over my Invoker, because that's more damage, and then probably negate the Emerald. Oh, he's attacking over Emerald, okay. I don't know if that one's particularly, like, optimal, because this, you know this is getting a Molmorat next turn, which the Molmorat itself I can then use to make Emerald again. Uh, but, I mean, I guess you don't have the knowledge that I play double Emerald. That is, uh, that is something to, to withhold, or not withhold, that's not the wrong word. Something to note is that he has no information on what I'm playing. Um, but setting two and passing, uh, he's playing huge kaijus with Eidolon. I think he's playing Eidolon Cyber Dragon, honestly. If we want to be completely real, I think that's what he's playing. Now, this is a really good card. This was really good for me to draw because that means that I'm going to be able to summon these out of my hand, use Boss Rush um, for some potential usage. Do I play a rank eight in this? I don't think I have the room. No, I do not have the room. All right. But so we're going to activate this, 
attempting to summon Molmerat from deck, and if anything, it's going to bait the Merkaba. Um, or Merkaba. Oh, Dimension Barrier. Dimension Barrier on Xyz, I guess? Yeah, Xyz. Okay, that's fair. Um, that is super fair, because that's going to be fine. I can just put this Tetran on the board, and you won't be able to out it out of uh, outside of using your own uh, Eidolon Summoner. So... Okay, he negated this, so it didn't summon from deck. That's that's okay. So I'll activate this, and we'll see where it gets me in terms of. Well, the thing is, like, he's in a situation where he gave me this gamma seal and he wasn't able to kill it, so I'm just gonna put it in defense mode. <laughs> um, so I mean, there's that. <clears throat> that's definitely what's gonna. That's definitely one of the one of the things that can happen. Now, if this gets negated by uh, the Merkaba, then. Uh, okay, it's not getting negated. Now, I know one of the cards in his hand is Eidolon uh, Alester, so that's fine. And now I can just start stacking up boss rushes, potentially. Uh, very, very easily, actually, in fact. But I'm going to put Tetran in defense mode. <clears throat> it can't be killed in battle. And I'm going to be able to out this spell or trap if I want to, which I'm actually probably going to. I can just remove this to pop this. Um, and... What I'll do is I'll put the boss rushes on the field first because they do have to see the monster be destroyed. And so if he's going to negate my Tetran's effect, well, he won't be able to destroy it actually because of the field spell. But so I will put these here. If this is Twin Twister, then I just, he's just got me. Fuck me. Got me. Got me, Duelist. But I just, I want to, uh, I want to do this just out of ca the case of uh, being thorough. Um, this seems like the best thing to do. So Solemn Strike, yeah, it can't be destroyed because of uh, Great Fortress Zelos. Um, so, you just paid 1500 for literally nothing. So, I'm not too worried about this. Go away, Sea Cleaner. You always do this when I'm trying to record. Uh-uh, not today. I see you trying to shadowly haze your way up in the corner. I see you. There you go. Alright, hopefully that didn't actually capture on the, uh, on the, hopefully that didn't render through onto the, uh, capture. Uh, because I think I have uh, I have it set to be blocked on uh, video capturing softwares, but I could just be wrong. But so what he's got here is he's got this that he's able to use. I probably should put this in defense mode too, thinking about it. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. Like I've got this on board. My opponent has to out my field spell before he can out Tetran. Because if he outs Tetran through battle, then he's going to trigger both of my boss rushes, which allows me to summon two covered cores, or in a different light, it allows me to summon Covered Core, and allows me to summon Crystal Core, which Crystal Core will let me put this in defense mode, and then I'll be able to instant fusion for like Panzer Dragon, and make Cyber Dragon Infinity. There's definitely a lot of uh, capabilities I have here, but for the capability that my opponent has, this Tetran is actually a pretty prime target for attacking, simply because he's going to be able to, uh, he's going to be able to, that doesn't do anything here, that doesn't out this situation. <laughs> Uh, Jizakiru does. Jizakiru gets over the Kaiju. So, uh, oh, this isn't Jizakiru, this is Thunder King. Was the first one Jizakiru? Yeah, it was. So, yeah, I'm almost positive that this is some form of, uh, Cyber Dragon deck. Uh, because, like, there's no reason to be playing these huge Kaijus unless you are, unless you're just wanting to get RNG lucky, um, with them. And, I mean, they are lights for, uh, Merkaba, so there's that. But, so, yeah, he doesn't get to do anything here except, like, put this face down, and that doesn't do anything. <laughs> I don't know what the purpose of this play was, but he has Eidolon Summoner back in his hand, which is fine. Um, now, I can out the uh, Thunder King with Cyber Dragon Infinity. I can just suck it up, so that's not a problem. Uh, I'm going to out the Merkaba first before that even happens, um, because I'm going to put the Merkaba in defense mode off Crystal Core, and then off of that, I'm going to uh, attack with uh, Cover Core. So uh, I'll be able to attack with Cover Core, and then I'll be able to keep this off the board, and then I'll be able to make my Cyber Dragon Infinity to suck this up. Um, I'll attack with, I'll actually attack two of these because I'll be able to, hmm, what's the best way to do this? Um, he has to basically attack the Tetran, or not, okay. Just don't. Um, I guess that's fine, I mean, you're not really outing anything, so I guess I can just sit here and play this waiting game. If you let me play the game on my pace, then then that's what, uh, that's what starts sucking for you, um, essentially. Because now I just get to summon Tetran, put a counter on it, remove it, pop this. Like, I just get to pop all your cards. And, like, I'm just going to maintain it to where your cards are irrelevant. Because you have to start killing these at some point. You have to. Ah, an emptiness. I see. 
that is where the that is where the problem starts. Is uh now well I just get to I get to kill this. You can't target this. <laughs> okay. I'm okay with this. Um, this emptiness is gonna go away. You can't well you're oh my god, he's gonna be able to use the idol on summoner from his hand to be an honest. Then this will die, and then my boss rushes will not be live. That's the problem. Okay, oh, he's just flipping it face down. Never mind. Okay, so he's actually in a very, very, very problematic situation for me right now because I don't have outs in my main deck to emptiness because at this point, I'm just like, fuck it. I'm filming for videos. If I've got it, if he's got it, then I guess he's got it. <laughs> like, that's, that's how it has to work. That's unfortunately how it has to work is that um, is that outing emptiness is probably not something that should be my major game plan. The only out to main deck uh, emptiness in this deck is uh, Raigeki, so that's the uh, that's the card we have to draw. But we're gonna actually just lose this turn. <laughs> Great, from controlling this game to losing to an emptiness. What a fucking masterful situation. That is ridiculous. Ah, oh, this that makes me upset. That just makes me so sad, so sad and so upset. Is the fact that I was literally playing this game on my own pace and controlling it to the point where everything was accounted for and I was going to be in such a strong situation this turn but then just emptiness. That sucks. <laughs> that's that's just terrible. I'm going to offer a rematch because I'd like to uh, I'd like to keep this uh, I'd like to keep this self-contained if at all possible. He did not accept my rematch. Sad times for sad me, but I get to go first and hopefully get to play this game on my pace again. And I do. Holy shit, double terror top. Fuck. <laughs> Oh my god, double terror top and the elemental triangle? Alright, I guess we'll play with this. But what this is going to rely on is I've got two of these in hand, which is fantastic, which is great. Uh, which means I could normal summon um, one of them with... I could normal summon this one, actually. It'd be actually very simple and very easy uh, to do so. And then I'd actually, if I had like something like boss rush, I could special it. And then uh, the cool thing is that if you have like a boss rush and a field spell and you're able to do zodiac play with this card specifically, you could like special it, use this, pop it, and get two boss rush triggers in the end phase. Um, there's, there's a lot of cool little interactions that this deck specifically has because of this uh, situation, but it's time to see if my opponent scoops to uh, Zodiac Beasts, because sometimes people do that. Um, I don't know why I'd attach Terra Top there and not Taka Tomborg, because I could have put Taka Tomborg back off of, uh, off of the, uh, the Emerald that I'm going to be making. Uh, but so from here, we'll just go straight into Tigris, and we'll use this effect for the Momorat to get the Momorat out of deck. And then leaving the Momorat under the Tigris is what's important because, like I said, this this play loses to Valor, but it plays around DD Crow. Because uh, if you did Valor, if they if you got Valor at any point during this, it would suck because you'd uh, you'd only get one Momorat out of your deck because you'd have have to waste the um, waste the material. Um, but if you are afraid of DD Crow, then you do it this way. So it's, it's kind of balanced in that there's only four Zodiacs in the extra deck that you can use for this kind of stuff, um, in that you have to play around either Valor or DD Crow based off which one you think is the bigger threat. Um, but I just do that play because it's more streamlined. Specifically for video purposes, it's more streamlined that way. Uh, but so from here, I can go into Digesto Emerald, uh, and I can put back my uh, my Momorats, and then I could just immediately Zodiac Triangle one out to be tribute fodder for like the covered core. Um, it's it's not really that big of a threat or issue or uh, necessity. I really want to draw the field spell. That's instant fusion. That's not the field spell, uh, but that is something that can be used. Uh, but not right now. Not right now. Not right now at all. But I can normal summon this. It would have no counters on it, uh, and that would be kind of shitty. I could use Triangle pop itself, get Momorat out of the deck, and then tribute for Covered Core. Uh, there's a few different options I have, but I actually just want to keep what I have on board here. Um, <laughs> I actually just really do. Um, I'm going to set this, actually, because I've got another Terra Top, so if the Emerald survives, then I'll just be able to put back the Takatom Borg, and this will do a thing. Um, and I've got the Viper I can normal summon, too, but if the Triangle gets something like Twin Twister, that's just going to be a lot of value for me, because it'll just go under the Drancia. So uh, let's see if we get Kaiju again. That'd be, uh, that'd be neat, right? Kaiju? Kaiju, Kaiju, I need to draw the field spell in this game somehow, or or like during this video because like, well I did draw it during this video. I drew it during the last game, so I guess there's that. I did I did start making BES plays, but 
and I was doing so very well, and then I just got emptiness. This is uh, this is gonna hopefully not be the uh, theme of the video. Yeah, Twin Twister. <laughs> hey, all right. So now your Twin Twister is just gonna be on Zodiac Beast Elemental Triangle, which is just gonna put itself under my Drancia. So now my Drancia has more materials, meaning that next turn when I start stacking on top of it with like Bullhorn and uh, Tigris and things like that, I'm just going to be able to just do nothing. But I'm just going to be able to do a much more extensive amount of things. Um, now I lost the Elemental Triangle for like triggering my boss rush on my own turn um, by getting more things out, but at this point that's not really a big factor. At this point all we really want to do is get to the Field Spell, and the Field Spell would be something we would draw off of the Emerald or our draw for next turn. And so I'm going to go ahead and start holding down A viciously because uh, in response to the summon, I can just get this off the board. Um, so we'll just do that because I can just get this off the board and then it can't trigger its effect to get your special summons. Neat. Oh my god. <laughs> in phase, really? Wow. Okay. Well, that's Crystal Core. What's in my graveyard? I've got these, which means I can use this to summon... Uh, I can use this to summon my, um, okay, he's just surrendering here. I guess I'll leave this just because it, uh, I'll leave this in the video just because of what it, uh, it, um, it showed. All right, well, hopefully this one, yep, I get to go first again. All right, let's, let's do it, broken. Uh, but so far, all we've been seeing is we've been seeing, uh, only Zodiac plays, but in this instance, we have the field spell, and we have all this stuff, so we're gonna be able to do Zodiac plus double boss rush. That's actually really strong. And the thing is, is that the thing that makes this really cool and what I really like about this is with Elemental Triangle and with Drancia, you're able to trigger your boss rushes on your own turn. That's what I really like, is that, like, for instance, in this situation, what I'm going to be able to do is I'm going to be able to do my Zodiac play into Drancia with Viper in hand, and I'm going to be able to use Great Fortress Zelos. I'm going to be able to use it to, uh, to special summon my Tetran out of hand, and then I'm just going to be able to use my Drancia to pop my Tetran, which will let me float into two bigger monsters, like two MK2s or something like that. Like, it's it's really it's really cool, and it's really, like, in theory strong, just because it's multiple threats your opponent has to deal with. Now, unfortunately, there's no real uh, protection from your field spell getting, like, Twin Twisted. Now, you can, uh, you can use Drancia on your opponent's turn to prevent things from, like, Castell and Diamond Dire from affecting your field spell. But uh, your field spell still does have a huge target on its head. But that's another reason why this is, in my opinion, really strong, is that you get to trigger it and gain advantage on your on your turn. Uh, you can trigger it on your own like on your own agenda, essentially. But uh, summon Momorats, uh, the standard stuff, and then we'll use this Bullhorn to get the search for Viper. It's very cookie cutter, um, but it's it's just it's something that uh, is a bit better in terms of. Instead of playing traps, at least in my opinion, uh, because of the fact that uh, oh fuck me no no I didn't want this daddy no I didn't want this ah uh, well shit <clears throat> I mean it's still fine it just means I don't get to make emerald damn it um, that's annoying um, I just I I I started talking again and I missed my uh, I missed my steps. For what I was trying to do. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> uh, Alright, well. At least in this situation, I get to special summon uh, Big Core MK2. And this will get four counters on it, because it gains three from being special summoned, and then it gets those. And so then I'll just play Double Boss Rush. Um, because these will these will be able to trigger um, if either of these die, and then if this dies. Or if I trigger it with my own Drancia. Um, there's, there's plenty of things. I don't get the Emerald here, which is like incredibly shitty uh, but I could definitely emerald later can I no in fact I don't think I can that's what's annoying and this is uh, gonna be a Rageki for a huge amount um, except like my mk2 it's like ugh, that sucks um, gear town okay why are all these whited out why are they all whited out come on now ancient gear catapult what do you do Destroy it, special summon an ancient gear monster from your deck. Okay, so this one has a this one has a picture. Reactor Dragon. Um, and what is that was Gear Town that got destroyed? Okay, all their pictures loaded in now. Good. Okay, uh, cannot be destroyed or targeted by opponent's card effects during the turn they are normal or special summoned. Um, 
you special summon an ancient gear monster from your hand or graveyard, can't special summon except an ancient gear monster. So he's got double reactor dragon. He's gonna attack my M core to uh, big core MK2 twice. It's gonna lose two counters, but that's fine. Next turn, I will be able to special this Tetran. Uh, ancient gear gadget. This is declare if a monster your opponent cannot be activated. Uh, spell until the end of damage step. That doesn't do anything. One, this isn't gonna die by battle. Two, because this isn't an activated effect. Um, and two, this doesn't stop my boss rushes for activating because the boss rushes trigger in the end phase. That was just very poor. Um, let's see, what does this do? Um, you can destroy one spell or trap card on the field at the end of the damage step if this card attacked. Okay, so that will get the special summon the, uh, the wyvern from his hand. He still can't kill the MK2. He can kill either of these during uh, when this card attacks. So this one will attack. What did he just add to his hand? And this was a uh, Ancient Gear Hunting Hound. Inflict 600 damage. Um, you can fuse just on the board. Okay. Uh, but so this gets to pop a card. If he's smart, he's going to pop Zelos. Yep. All right. And then from here, I'm going to be able to summon Viper and go into Durancia because all of my things are gone because I messed up. <laughs> oh, this is terrible. This is bad. Um, if I had made the Emerald there, I would have had all of my stuff loaded back into my extra deck, and I would have been able to normal summon Viper, go with Tigris, get my Molmorat, and then do like a double Molmorat play. Um, and that would have been great. But because of the, uh, because of the, uh, misclicks that I've made, the mistakes that were made, the clicks that were made, uh, I definitely do not have access to that anymore. So I will probably be playing this deck for at least one more video, um, because of the fact that, uh, that I can't let that slide. I just, I, I can't. I can't normal summon either. Um, so there's that. Which is a problem. Um, but let's see. This is, at the end of the damage step of this card attacked, you can just twist trap on the field. So, um, this thing has, this thing has four counters. Yeah? Oh. Because, uh, because he attacked it with these, it never removed counters, because the counter removing is an activated effect. The more you know. But, so, we'll attack this. So, in theory, he can never kill this in battle. <laughs> in theory, with these, he can never kill it in battle. Um, so, that's neat. That's something noteworthy. That means I get to play this game on my own pace uh, until he outs these. But he will out these with just attacking with this. Um, so, yeah, and this does defense position, right? Um, oh, if it was tribute summoned by tributing an ancient gear, if it attacks a transmission monster and inflicts piercing. Um, okay. Now, this is, uh, he can fusion summon an ancient gear monster from his extra deck using monsters from his hand or field of fusion materials. Yep. Easy, fine. Um, if he summons anything that does the until the end of damage step, the cards can't, uh, my card effects can't activate, then I just turn this to defense mode and I literally just don't lose. Um,. Chaos Giant. Uh, unaffected. Cannot activate their effects during the battle phase. Um, but it inflicts piercing damage. So that's going to be the thing. I can't put this in defense mode. Um, so this one does inflict piercing. And it's unaffected by spell and trap effects. Um, so that's that's the problem. <laughs> I can't deal with this. Oh, this is bad. Hopefully my voice heals and then I can make another video with this deck because this deck is so cool. But I'm just getting the shittiest luck with it between emptiness and between me just not picking the right card. Oh, <laughs> it's just terrible. But so, uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just intern because he's going to be able to use this attack and pop my other boss rush, right? That's the plan at least. He's going to pop my boss rush which means that now I'll be able to normal summon. Which means I'll be able to normal summon Viper. Now I'll put a Drancy on top of it and I'll pop his uh, uh, his uh, Chaos Giant. And so if I pop his Chaos Giant, that means I can just turn this to defense mode and then he will literally not be able to out me for the rest of the game until he makes another one of these. Um, and then I'll be able to play bo uh, Boss Rush next turn because this thing still has three counters. Like, it's, it's not losing counters because of him not being able to just... He's not doing anything to it. So let's see if I'm able to. If I win this game, then this ancient gear deck is probably trash. Um, like I haven't even like read anything about it, as you can tell from the uh, from the inherent lack of my knowledge of how the cards work. 
and like I literally had to read all of them to see what they are, but I mean it's definitely a deck I might check out um, in the uh, near future, because isn't this another structure deck? Like this is another structure deck release if I remember correctly, um, but if my opponent cannot beat me with literally of having his own way with me for the past infinite amounts of turns, then um, then that's, that's all that needs to happen. So now he has this, which means this is going to attack this, and it's going to take a counter off of it. But that's fine, because next turn, I'm just going to turn into attack mode, drop Max C and attack over it. He'll summon his Silver Gadget from deck. Um... Oh, he can summon an, he can summon Ancient Gear Gadget. It's a level four gadget monster. I like that. I really, really like that. But this thing is starting to lose counters now, and that's definitely something that is uh, is something that I need to address. Is that I need something to prevent this from losing counters, and I think that thing is. Hmm. I don't know. I really don't. I don't know how I'm supposed to answer this. Uh, and that's the problem. Is I don't know how. Uh, but I could actually, I could actually just uh, try and summon big. I could, try, I could try and summon Governed Core, because at least there's the RNG of me flipping coins. There's, there's so much options. Uh, this thing has a banish effect from Grave. Destroy it, and if you do so, summon Ancient Gear Mouse from your deck. Oh! No, 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 no! I wanted that. <laughs> um. Let's see. Wait, 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 wait. Destroy and special summon a token. I mean, yes, I still definitely wanted to use the Max Seed, but I just right click. This game is not real. I'm, I'm mess, I've messed up twice, just from my own faulty inputs, and that's a reason why I just love, um, like cart. I love things like, um, like uh, DM because of the fact that it lets me do these. Oh shit. Okay. All right. So let's see. I've got access to the field spell now. I've also got an instant fusion, which gives me access to emerald, which I could use. I'm gonna use that. I'm gonna do that first. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna terraforming for Great Fortress Zelos. Then I'm gonna instant fusion for Norden into emerald. Uh, or do I make do I have dweller in this extra deck? I do have dweller. Ooh, I mean, but the the emerald is like the juiciest because the emerald will just allow me to uh, to try and do things. Uh, but so yeah, we'll instant fusion here. We'll pay a thousand, get our Norden. Uh, if I had Crystal Core, I would definitely, definitely be going for Cyber Dragon Infinity right now. But as it stands, we'll use this, and we will summon back the Molmarat. Um, yeah, uh, we'll summon back Molmarat, and I will. Uh, I will use. Let's see, what do I have in my deck that I could draw um, that would benefit me off this Emerald more? Um, I could definitely emerald reset all of my zodiac resources, or I could make dweller kill this, so that then this is literally the only thing on the board. Um, but then if he attacks this, yeah, I think the dweller is just infinitely better in terms of the play, uh, because I could dweller attack this, <clears throat> I can summon covered core, crash this. Um, yeah, there, there. That's just well, no, I could definitely just do that anyway. Oh my God, who is texting? Why are you texting me now? Um, that's not something I want. But it's Emerald or Dweller. Emerald or Dweller. Emerald or Dweller. I think Emerald is definitely the safest bet. And uh, I will definitely... I'm going to do the Emerald. Yes, because if I draw... If I draw Molmorat or a Terra Top, I could just normal summon the thing. Right? And then I could go into my Zodiac plays. So what we'll put back is we'll put back Tigris. And we will put back a Molmorat. And we will put back... A uh, another Molmorat, yeah. No, no, there's there's really no reason to put those back, um, other than that it just lets me spam my board. Uh, but yeah, we'll put back Tigris two Molmorats because what this will allow is that okay, that's a Terra Top, that's really good. Oh my god, um, it's not really good because I don't have a fucking uh, Taka Tomborg in my deck. I'm a dumbass. You will find, you will find that I'm the biggest dumbass in the land. Um, but so we'll special summon this from hand because I'll be able to I'll be able to crash this into this and now I can't activate my boss rush because I just normal summon this. Uh, <laughs> oh boy! All right. Well, let's see. What we're gonna do is we're going to attack with this into the silver gadget. We're gonna see what he summons first. Silver gadget will trigger. He'll summon his thing. I am just 
overwhelmed with sickness right now. And it's not doing me a good deed. Um, but so this can attack that. I don't really think I care about the ancient gear token. Um, so we'll attack this gadget. And then, uh, and then that will cause me to lose a counter. This gold gadget will trigger. Summoning probably... Oh, just another silver gadget? Uh, do I want to... I definitely have to crash with this. That's the sad thing, is I have to crash with it. Um, and I'll call heads. And it landed on heads, so I keep my counter. Yes. Uh, now, next turn, if he's able to tribute summon a monster, which he could very likely be able to do, then I just lose, because he'll attack over my terror top. Well, if he tribute summons like Reactor Dragon, then uh, then I'm gonna, gonna uh, I was gonna lose anyway because he could attack th this with a uh, defense uh, piercing. But as it looks like it, <clears throat> as it would seem, I uh, seem to not have that big of a problem. Uh, but so what we'll do is we'll activate this, and we will shuffle back the uh, the Drancia, the Bullhorn, and uh, the Wild. No, we don't want the Wild Bull. We want the we want this. We want a Drancia. And there's, what, one Mulmorat left in Grave? Yeah, there is. Uh, so we want Viper. Because Viper will allow me to, uh, to do my stuff. Um, so yeah, like, I'm just... This, this game is so wonky, I've made two very, very crippling mistakes. And it's just, it's... Apparently it's punishing me, but it's not punishing me too hard? Uh, question mark? But I get to special this Tetrum from my hand. Um, off of Great Fortress Zelos, give it a counter and then use the counter to pop this, and then I just get to run over his board and turn this to defense mode, potentially. Uh, I don't know if that's actually something that needs to be relevant um, in turning this to defense mode, because I don't know how big things are in his deck. I mean, he could... Well, I mean, I need to check how big uh, Ancient Gear Hound is before I do anything else. Hound is what? What is that, a thousand? Yes, that is a thousand. So he could deal 600 to me off of Hound. <laughs> And, uh, and then that would be, uh, something. But, do I want to actually destroy this? <clears throat> because if I destroy this, he could summon one of his things from Grave, but then I could also just crash. Um, let's see, let me, let me read this. This, uh, cannot be special summoned by other way. So, as, as long as he can't summon that card, I'm okay with popping this and seeing what it is. Because based off that, that will be, uh, I'll just have to kill whatever he summons. Um, but this will attack that. Which will deal, uh, which will, uh, which will make him summon these. Reckless Greed. Interesting. Interesting choice. Um, okay. So, Emerald has almost no business being in defense mode as long as this Terra Top is in attack mode as well. Uh, because Terra Top is just the, uh, just the guinea pig for this, uh, exchange. So what we'll do is we will attack this into the Ancient Gear token. And then we will attack this into his Silver Gadget, which will probably summon gold gadget from deck. I mean, I've already seen two of them. He could have another... No, no other ones? Oh, well then this is just game. Neato! Wow, this Ancient Gear deck seems like it's not good. <laughs> it just seems like it's not good at all. I could have played Boss Rush there, but it doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. This is game. It... it uh, chalk that one up to a third mistake that I've made. Third mistake. Oh my god, that deck just seems like it's not real. I mean, it could be very real. I'd have to check out the rest of the cards. But I think, just based off that, the fact that he just didn't kill me is either a problem with the player, how he was playing the deck, or it's a problem with the deck itself. I'm not too sure at all. But anyway, this video is pretty long. Holy shit. So I think I'm just going to cut it here, and we will see how well it does. Now, if you want me to play this deck for another video, definitely give this video a like. Leave a comment telling me you want to want me to or something like that. I think this deck's really interesting and really cool because of the fact that the Zodiacs allow you to make very aggressive plays that are also defensive, as well as Emerald constantly putting back your BES monsters means that boss rush is in theory infinite. There's stuff like that. It's, it's a really neat little concept that I like, but let me know what you think on that. And also, um, if you haven't put your input on the straw poll for whether or not I use a Patreon to make a Discord server using pledgers um, to populate that server and use those people to play with for these videos to keep it, you know, contained and let you guys be involved, or if you want me to uh, live stream and try to get games that way, or if you want me to make a circle of friends, if you didn't put your input on that straw poll, there's a link in the description to that.
this will be the last video that I'm advertising that. It's not as a thing to uh, vote on, so definitely go uh, and have your voice heard if you have one. But anyway, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. If you like this video, definitely be sure to like and subscribe. It helps me out a ton and helps the channel community within it grow. And the bigger the channel grows and the better it does, the more I'm going to be willing to put more content out daily and keeping my channel moving because I've been active for a really long time and you guys seem to really like that. But anyway, check out the links on screen and maybe go check out my channel itself to find more videos you might like as well. There's over a thousand videos on my channel itself, so if you can't find something else you like, then I'd be incredibly surprised. But as I've already said, thank you for watching. Thank you for your time as usual. And as always, guys, take care. I will see you in the next video.